Hello, uh, I'm Tony Reddy and my colleague Will Power are going to talk about our practice experience in using Revit and BIM over a number of years. Uh, I'm going to start with uh, a quote from Bill, Bill Gates, and you might wonder what the hell Bill Gates has to do with it, but this probably explains the journey we've been through over the last 10 years in relation to looking at Revit and BIM. Um, I, f I should first explain about myself. As a young architect, I was very interested in the whole concept, and people like uh, Dan and Gary have spoken about this, of being able to visualize in 3D. When I was a student, I can remember actually how long it took to make a 3D model with using a computer. I can remember being on a visiting board with the RAI and RBA to Bolton Street with Robin Walker and some other architects, and being told by one of the tutors that it, you know uh, computers would never catch on in architecture. Quite, quite amazing. That was only in the early 80s. But most people who know me know that I've been very committed to the whole concept. I, I believe that we're only on the beginning of a journey in terms of the construction industry, indeed in whole parts of our life, about how the computer will influ influence our lives. Uh, so we, we were one of the first practices to use AutoCAD in Ireland, and we were one of the first to bring in BIM, or, or bring in Revit. In fact, one of the worst business decisions we made, and that's why I have this quote up here, we were anticipating that we would move to Revit in 2007. Indeed, Ralph Montague and Pat Slattery here will well remember the day when 95 AutoCAD license arrived in December 2007. That was pretty bad timing. Uh, but it begins a journey. Um, and uh, I, I suppose uh, this image is really just about how things evolve very quickly. But I think from the time, at, at the end of the day, I think a number of speakers have spoken about it. The real use to an architect and to the industry uh, about Revit and BIM is the ability to conceive in 3D. I mean, it's frustrating for an architect, and I think Gary just heard well, the frustration of the time it takes to put the idea that's in the mind onto paper. When it was in papyrus, when, when stone masons had to set it out roughly for the masons to follow. What we are, we are in a fortunate age where we're moving to a point where the rate of Communication of ideas to, to to image is much is closer to that of the human mind, and it it allows much greater creativity. Um, in terms of our own practice, we we were two hundred and twenty in two thousand and eight May two thousand and eight. By that, dis we had won five public private partnerships in a row in five for five separate clients. So we thought we were invincible, and we knew the industry was getting bad. But by that Christmas inconceivable. All five had either gone bust or the projects had been cancelled. And people said after we were very wise to cut back. We had no choice, our projects disappeared. But what we did immediately, counterintuitively, we had five offices in Ireland, we had offices in Europe, we actually moved to London of all places. And the re reason we did was it was the only place that looked like it might revive, even, even though it was in recession. And we had skill sets, we were very fortunate that we were still alive, um, but we knew that we didn't have enough work in Ireland for the foreseeable future to keep the small, the, the reduced size of the office together. Each of the offices survived in this local economy, but even that was not enough. We had skill sets that we felt we could bring to another economy. I'm not going to go into detail, but we were fortunate in we were in most sectors, from residential to office to master planning, urban design, sustainability, really you name it, we, we were doing it. And um, we, we, we decided that we needed to go to a global um, city to attempt to transfer those skills. This is our office in Dartry, where I saw the core of our business is, where maybe a lot of the thought center is um, for all our practices. We had begun very early to do some experimental projects in, in, in Revit in the early days. We did a project at Titanic Quarter. Uh, we, we did a project at Golden Lane beside the Radisson, and we did some of the Radisson in it, but they were really experimental, they weren't germane. But in, 19, in, in 2009, after the crash, we said we are going to perfect our skill sets in Revit. And we began to do projects both here and in the UK in it. This is a very early healthcare project we did, and the, the image of, above is the CGI image. The image below is the actual built building. It's a complex healthcare project, 
but it was done entirely in vain. One couldn't have done this project in an earlier era uh, by conventional drawing means. It would have been very difficult, but the fabrication of the pieces of the building was all done through our use of Revit and Bill. In London, we began to use Revit for, Gary spoke about it, and there's still a debate about at what stage one introduces uh, Revit and BIM into a project. Personally, I believe we should do it earlier, but I do recognise there are practical problems, and Gary and Dan both spoke about them. There are real practical problems that when you've got a deadline, um, very often those who, who actually produce in Revit um, at present we're in an industry where a lot of architects can't use it so there are real difficulties in actually um, in getting to the same point of understanding of what the outputs required are we probably will get through that you'll often find somebody who's working on a model is doing very well in the model but in actual fact when you look at the plans they're not actually developed I think that comes back again to Gary's point about where what we need to do as a profession and as an industry is get to the point where there's a common understanding of outputs and the needs and outputs. Uh, out of some early residential projects we began to win a lot of bigger projects and I think one of the interesting things in, in the UK versus Ireland is I think particularly in the London area architects have become very much uh, silo based that they people do particular things but they don't do everything from inception to completion. I think it's because we're doing work in Revit, when we do everything from the and completion, it's probably given us an advantage over a number of our colleagues who perhaps only do a piece of a project. We're involved in one project uh, where the client has another team where he has four architects to do simply one project, all specialist disciplines. And these, these are just some samples. I'm not going to go through them in detail because Will will be doing that. Um, this is a project in um, a student residence scheme, a very complex urban intervention. Uh, we were able to use at a master planning level of making a model to show the planners how the project integrated into the surrounding area. And then at another level, we could zoom in and begin to detail the building uh, in a, uh, right down to individual uh, rooms and furniture. And again, I we will be covering this. These are other projects we're involved in currently in London. And this is one last one I just talked about, and it probably is some indication. This is uh, Google, the Google Bridge in, in Barrow Street in Dublin. The bridge is actually a three three way bridge, but um, it's on three different levels, so uh, it's it, it's 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 connecting uh, levels that are, are different. This couldn't have been done by conventional means, and um, we actually did it with a German contractor. Uh, the entire thing was done in Revit. Um, and all of the detailing was done in Revit. And it probably begins to suggest a future, a future where I, I've certainly seen and I believe that you're going to see a future where while we have a debate at present about output, output at present is two-dimensional from a three-dimensional model. I see a future where the three-dimensional model will be the output and contractors will use that with robotics to build a building uh, because all of the information is in there. And I think that's the fascinating thing about uh, Revit that it allows us actually conceive the totality of the building uh, at every level, at whatever level one an architect and engineer wants to take it to, and that is the future. Thank you. Uh, good morning. Uh, my name is William Power. Uh, I'm the credit bid manager at Ready Architecture and Urbanism. Um, I'm here now, I'm going to follow on from Tony and I'm going to get a bit more specific about projects. Um, but I'd like to throw in a few of these um, inspirational quotes and stuff uh, into my presentations that I've uh, found inspirational over the years. Um, and this one here is just about this idea that this, the same old thinking gets the same old results, that we keep going the way that we normally do without trying to progress. We, we, we just, we just uh, keep, keep uh, getting errors and stuff in, in, in what we do. Um, and this is, this is a quote from uh, uh, Admiral Grace Hopper, who was at the forefront of um, code development in 
1945 in, in the US Army, uh, probably when it was, wasn't the easiest thing for a woman to be moving into. But she, she is uh, regarded as one of the, the, the four uh, pioneers of uh, computer uh, language. Um, and she had this idea that, like, why, why does it have to be the same old thing? Like, does the clock have to run clockwise why, if it runs backwards? It, it still does the same. You just have to get used to how it works. Eventually, you'll read it as if it was norm. Uh, just a bit about me. I am slightly different to the other speakers in that my, my background is architectural technology. So I'm more of a, a technical guy, uh, 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 probably a, a little bit um, of a nerd, I suppose. Uh, but um, I, I've started out in the National Building Agency for a very short period of about six months. Couldn't hack the, the pace up in Dublin, so I moved to Reddy's in Kilkenny. And I spent eight or nine years there and then um, went, went off and uh, dur during the downturn and did a lot of uh, consulting work with, with the guys doing contract work, picking up bits and pieces. But then came back to Reddy's um, and at the same time, uh, as doing all this in the last few years, I've, I've, I've added on these um, lots of, I've, I've, I've found a, a, a need to get back and learn lots of inf or more stuff. So over the past few years, I've, I've kind of added stuff to, to my resume. Again, just to look at where Redis have come uh, over the, the, since, since we started looking or that first purchase of Revit. So we, we've, we've come through all these things like, um, uh, that infamous buying of uh, a load of licenses just at bad timing. But in recent years, we, we, we've, we've come around the concept that this needs to be managed. Um, it, it, is, it is a process. Um, and I, I was lucky to be in a position where I was uh, appointed BIM manager for the company just started last year. And, and my mandate then is to strategically look at the whole office and to try and get all these processes through um, and develop uh, the developed systems. And then our future thoughts are to look at, at more, uh, some cert certification around it to actually get a, a seal of, a, not a seal of approval, but um, to get certification saying that we, we can do it. Um, this would have been our first BIM level two experience um, as with some other, uh, the, uh, PPP for the quads in Grange Gorman. Uh, it was kind of short-lived tender process, but in a, in a very short uh, space of about six months, we, we got exposed to a lot of um, a lot of what BIM Level Two is, a lot of the deliverables. Um, again, I, I'm today. I'm just going to concentrate more on a few case studies. So, uh, the first one being Embassy Gardens Phase Two in, in the UK, which we've used as a test, well, not te a. a uh, the, our base project to get all our processes in place. The, the, the whole o overriding principle of this project was to get everything from the model. So from schedules to details that our complete 2D output came from the models. Uh, look at a bit about uh, Mill Street and then looking at this new project that we're just starting in UCD. So again, another quote um, for uh, this kind of feeds into it, to my view of it. Like that, I, I like to think myself as a, a bit of a pioneer. That I'm out there trying trying to find new ways of doing it. Um, I remember was it at the last one someone was talking about this idea of hiring lazy people. <laughs> I, I tend to think of myself as being a bit lazy, and I, I I want to find the most efficient way to do it. Um, I, I don't like doing tedious things over and over again. So if I can find ways of automating it, that, that that's what I like to do. Um, so this is Embassy Gardens. Um, so we've got two phases. Um, at the moment, we're just finishing out what is the, the hopefully red building on the left-hand side. Uh, it's phase one, um, uh, along with, I just remember the colors here. Uh, the brown bit is phase, what is phase two, uh, that we're starting, it consists of three buildings and approximately 850 apartments, um, ranging from studios to tree beds and up into penthouses. Um, and then the, the square in the middle, uh, the green square, is the new US Embassy, and the curved building is the new Dutch Embassy that's going to be going in London. Um, so it's kind of a, a prestigious area and a prestigious project that we're, we're, we're involved in. Um, we're involved, again, as Tony was saying, there, there's um, 
a few architects on it already, um, and we're taking over stage E, so we've got a stage D uh, design intent, and our job is to deliver the building, really, the, the three buildings. Um, and it, it's unique in, its, in that it has this um, uh, pool spanning two buildings, 10 stories up, so it, it is quite challenging uh, try, try, trying to get all these things to work. Again, so we're, we're looking at uh, three buildings here, three, four, and five. Um, and uh, at the moment, uh, we're, we're in the middle of production. But just to run through how, how we've set this up uh, initially. So again, we're, we're an Autodesk house, uh, and, and we have been for forever, really. Um, so the, all the modeling is done in, within Revit, and we use uh, MBS Create. We, we moved to MBS Create at the start of last year. Um, and th this has brought massive benefits in over, over what was building, um, just purely from the fact that it, it, it links to a centralized database in the MBS, so everything is constantly up to date, and you get these lovely warnings that if a, B a BS code gets updated or something like it, it'll give you a warning going, do you want to actually use the new one or keep the old one? Um, and from this, we, we, we link through the use of keynotes into our models, um, and we, everything is linked back to that one source within within Create that's managed by uh, one person. Uh, and at the moment, we're, we're using Microsoft Access a lot um, to, to do a lot of scheduling through this um, free tool that comes with Revit, the database link. Uh, and we're pulling back and forth between, between all these things and getting information uh, from it. Uh, we, we can come, we, we've scheduled set up that we can come directly into Excel, but uh, going back, you have to use a, a second party tool to actually go back. It's not very, Revit is not very good at taking stuff directly, unless you find this guy, uh, which is, um, we're just getting into in the last few months and we're rapidly moving into um, looking at it. But it seems to be the, the, the future of, uh, of a lot of things within, within the, the, the spin world. Again, just to talk about Embassy, we, we've got a team of, fluctuates between eight and ten people uh, working in various places. So like we, we've got people remoting in and working from various different offices. And myself and Des, who's uh, from all Lachlan, we, we spend some time at home. We actually work from home on days and all, all this is just feasible now because of where we are as an industry or as a generation, I suppose, that the technology is there now to be able to, um, to easily access this through um, we, we use Skype for Business a lot, and we, we've recently um, partnered with um, Union Square. They provide a, a common data environment of sorts for us. Um, so this allows us instant access to all the information, uh, including like we, we've, uh, we use uh, remote desktoping to access models and stuff like that. But, um, sorry, I'll just go back. Um, so at, at the moment, um, we, we, we have um, a lot of models. It, they're big buildings. Uh, it's very complex. Uh, so, like th this, just is a, a view of the various models that we've used to federate for, for to, to take our information. Uh, I suppose the point to be made is that our, our deliverable on this is still the traditional 2D. So it's it's the guys are still building from drawings and schedules and, and specifications, and and we, we're I suppose it's our goal, and we're driving a, a, a BIM uh, use within this project. Um, and we're finding massive benefits, even just in efficiencies within uh, the, the team that we're using. Like we're, we're getting a lot of work for, from a smaller team that we would have normally had on it. And, and some of that is due to this fact that it's, it's very hard to find people at the moment. Um, I think everyone will say the same. It's just fi finding good, uh, experienced people um, has become next to impossible. Um, so. We've got these uh, models that we pull all our drawings from. Um, and just to go through so, so, some of how we build these, um, like what you're seeing here now are a set of details. So we, 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 what, what you're seeing is what we've modeled or what, what we have, um, what we're pulling directly from the 3D model itself. Now the, the windows and stuff are actually 2D components built into the systems that are in there. So when you actually refine the, 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 the level of detail on this, these things automatically appear. But if you're looking at them in 3D, they're just simple boxes, just simple geometry with, um, with, with details attached to them. 
Uh, over this, then we add the, the 2D detail, the stuff that we don't need in the model for, uh, from a visual perspective. Uh, and again, then into annotations. And all these annotations, again, are linked back to the MBS Create. Um, so like, we, we're just building up the details within Revit. And this, with, with I suppose, detailing as well, it, it just comes back to this old adage that there's a lot of front end work here and that. We, we had a lot of time here where we were building um, families and stuff, but once we've been built now, they're, they're getting rolled out into other projects that are speeding up everything we do. We're, we're starting to build family or libraries. Uh, and more recently, we've started to look at the more detailed work like the interiors um, and the, the fit out items. Uh, and again, just to, like from a scheduling perspective, we'd take it like this, this model that we're looking at here has the balconies for one building and has all the information in there. So we, 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 take, we, we take that into access, um, and I've built, uh, where we've built these um, queries that produce schedules directly out from it. Now, the beautiful thing about it is with, with the use of shared parameters, once I built that schedule, it can be moved to any project as long as we keep using the same information. So like I can move that to, to any project with a balcony and it will produce the schedule. Uh, and then out to, into the standard form that we have deliver, which is uh, our, um, PDFs, schedules. Uh, on to Mill Street. Um, uh, this, this was about um, uh, just a, a quick look at it. It's a student housing scheme in the Black Pits, um, 400 odd beds. Um, and just a quick talk about this really is about um, working with the team, working as a, a team. It's, it's, a, it's our first project where we have a contractual delivery uh, along with, with the rest of the team. Uh, you can see, like at the moment, the, the three names that are up there are, are, are there because we, they were involved in, let's say, the negotiations. We call it collaboration o -o -o over over the various bits and pieces. Uh, initially, it's, again, it's one of these jobs where, where where it's coming at a later stage. So we, we assisted the client by producing the, uh, an inform, uh, an employer's information requirements document that kind of outlined what what the client wanted from the project. Uh, it was based on the RAI template, so we, we, we've kind of taken it and adapted it. And from this now, we're, 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 take, we're creating our own template for, for rollout on our own pro projects. Um, and then uh, Turner and Townsend uh, were involved in developing a BIM protocol that has now been um, included in the, the, the contractual documents. Um, so. That, I suppose that that's the UCD or the Mill Street. Like the, it, it's a similar story to Embassy, apart from the fact that we have this contractual delivery on it now. Um, UCD. Uh, this is a project we, we, we started in November, um, and we're really looking at this as being the new way of doing projects within Redis. So um, we, we're really looking at trying to take all that we've learned and move forward and to output stuff or output the information we need. Uh, again, you'd be familiar with uh, the UCD site, um, but it's, it's a large scheme uh, with like a lot of bed spaces um, that are it's currently in, in design development, so it's changing every day, really. Um, so just to look at a couple of things that we've done on this in the last while. Um, one, this is uh, showing the power of this, uh, of Dynamo. Um, this is an open source map that we've pulled off the internet. Uh, we've exported it from it, and from this we, we can we, we, we built a script that will take the, the map. It'll identify you can I, the map is built on layers, so you can identify buildings, identify roads, and you can take you can take those buildings and create masses. But also it has a lot of information in there, like addresses, uh, building types, and stuff like that, that we can pull through this code as well. So we, we can, well, it, might, it took about a day and a half to build a script. Now it's just a matter of running it once we actually get the extract of the map. And we, we, we can just constantly pull, very quickly get a lot of information into the models. And from that, then we can create filters that, um, that get the, the kind of master planning uh, images that we, we use quite a lot, like uh, house type or um, building heights and stuff like that. Um, so and then this like it actually produces this information in in Revit and pulls it in. Uh, again, just uh, we're looking at uh, trying trying to make everything automated. So we 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 use phasing to build our, our apartment. So we 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 
we, we build it with rooms on, on phases so that we can pull gross areas and apartment areas directly from, again, using, using uh, Dynamo, just pulling these areas through into the, the, the different rooms so that we can actually schedule all these together later on. Um, then just to look at some, I suppose, lessons that we, we've learned along the way. Uh, one of the main things is that things change very quickly, um, not from a project perspective, but from a technology pers perspective more than anything. Uh, and what, what, what we, we thought was going to be the way six months ago has changed even since. And like, the, the future we see like, is that uh, some, some of this stuff is going to be, um, Dy Dy Dynamo for us is going to play a, a big part in, in what we do in the future. Uh, in that we can, you can get in and interrogate and pull a lot of information very quickly between different stuff and, and also build uh, complex information. And the fact that MBS Create is built around a structured database as well, we, we see at some stage that we will be able to get in and pull information directly from that. Uh, we just need to figure out how to do it, I suppose, over the next while. Um, this is just a project that we, we were, a little quick thing that we were looking at in the last couple of days, but it was this, um, project we're looking at that had a hyper hyperbolic paraboloid roof um, and we're looking at modeling it and I, I hate to think about how long it would have taken me to model it without, um, without uh, dynamo but like just by picking the four coordinates of the, the, the various points on it putting them into the script um, we can create this uh, form in, in, in Revit that, that we can quickly use and bring in uh, and, and, and use as a, a, the roof within our model. Uh, the, the other great thing is that if we ever want to do another one, we have that script there. All we do is change the coordinates on it and it just quickly produces it. Just a plug for tonight there. Um, there is a Revit users group meeting tonight and Dynamo will be part of the discussion tonight. At it. Uh, and then, um, one of the other lessons that we were learning quickly is that when people tell us that they can do certain things, we just we need to make sure that they can do it because uh, we, we we've had some cases where, where where we've been people have been found wanting. So we, we've recently signed or signed up to this um, website called Knowledge Spart, and we use it for testing. Uh, they have fundamental tests for Revit and BIM and uh, structure. But we can send this out to anyone, and we've, we've been using it to test um, interviewees. Uh, they, they find it very amusing. But, um, so we, we, we send them out a fundamentals test, and we can get it back. But the great thing for them is they get this report, and, and they can find, and it, give, it tells them where they need to actually upscale or where they need to go to find what they need, need to do. Uh, again, that's kind of the end of my story for now. Uh, it's a very much be, to be continued, uh, as it will be for a long time. Uh, I always throw this one in for good measure. Uh, it's a, it's a kind of um, just shows that stuff hasn't changed in in, in over a century really because it's um, it, it's just about getting out there and kind of uh, making up these procedures and protocols and stuff because if you ask people what they want, they wouldn't know what they wanted because it's not there yet. So um, it, it's it's. We just need to get on with it. And again, this this is the world we're moving to. Um, it's, it's all moving into where everything interacts digitally. Um, and that's it, really. So, any questions? <laughs>